Boom, boom. What's going on, everybody? Oh, my face is getting cut off. Actually, it's more like I got a big space right where my head is. Why would I pay so much attention to where my head is on the screen? Because that's the whole concept of our stream today. Where is your face on the screen? Where is your face on the screen? Not exactly. Maybe metaphorically speaking, that's kind of what it is. So we're doing a new setup compared to the old new setup. Uh, we're back to the iPad. Sub Donnie. Well, you got that double I. I know we've been friends for a minute, but like, I feel like it's time for me to ask you, where's that second eye come from? It's because you got two eyes. What? 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 Yeah, man, we friends. No, I mean, shit. It's the same shit, man. Same word, different word. What's up, complicated? You now, fam. See, to me, fam is like, a, it's like a feel. And like, I've never even seen your face, dude. And I'm good with you. And let me explain something to you. Like, I was at the beach last weekend. And somehow I got into this conversation with a random stranger, which I, I do a lot. Because I'm a random stranger to 7 billion people, if you think about it. Um, what's up? You just slipped in from Kim's stream? That's a good, that means good mojo's already coming in. So I'm, I'm, there's this girl who's sitting in like a beach chair. We're both at the beach. She's just chilling there. And I'm like, yo, can you watch my shit for a second? It was one of those kind of conversations. And somehow I don't remember exactly how this got kicked off, but we were talking about COVID and you got to clean things and this and that. She works at the beach place. Somehow we got on the thing about like online dating. And I'm like, the thing about online dating for me is I like to be able to sort of like have a vibe on somebody before I have any interest in dating that person, right? Web domain is failing. Really? Thanks, T. Man, it's good to see you, man. So anyway, the point I'm making is what's funny about it is like the last long period of time, like I don't, I don't do online dating. I love on people that do. I think, what's up, Lemony Lemony? How you feeling, man? Wow. Val went ghost on us yesterday, yo. Val was like, I'll see you there, maybe. And I'm like, what? what's the maybe part? Clown it on you, man. Yeah. Oh, no. I mean, sometimes that's not a bad. Sometimes you got like shit going on and it's good, and then the police show up and you're like, yeah, but it was at least it was a good story. But that sounds like that was not fun. So don't even, don't even worry about it. <sighs> no, 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 no. This was bad police in the house, not good police in the house. I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. Um, thank you, Donnie. Wow, man, what kind of promo people? Anyway, the point I was trying to make, we should do a stream, which is basically every stream we've done, where I just start a thought and then I'm off to some other thought and you guys pull me around all, and it's like, what was he even talking about? Doesn't matter. What's up, woo woo? <laughs> woo woo. It's glitching, right? It's been kind of, it's been kind of glitch. It's been kind of glitch. Um, I think they're doing some tweakies with it. Little woo. Ha, I like that, dude. Dude, we just, we just figured out your, uh, your artist name, woo woo. Little woo. Dude, I like that. Little woo. You woo. You could do that. You could do you woo. You're like, why come? Why come? Why come you? Uh, what's up? What's up, everybody? You will, no, I don't. There's a lot of shit I don't know. There's probably half the shit that I say. People are like, you don't know what that actually means, do you? Like, you don't know what, like, Tori, what did you tell me the other day? And you were like, you don't, you don't really know what that means, do you? 
It was something. What was it? Oh, it's a face. What you talking about? Oh man, what's up, Plester? See you there, man. Thanks for the for the props. Um, super glad you're here. Actually, I wasn't expecting you to to slide in. Um, this will be fun. So that reminds me, this is going to be. Um, I like this. Is that anywhere close? Wait, do it again, dude. Like, am I smiling too much? I'm smiling too much. Wait, <laughs> Paluso. What's up, dude? Man, this is gonna be this is gonna be fucking tight today, man. Tori's clowning on me yesterday. She's like, you know, you always say that every time, right? I'm like, I know, but it's true. That was my pushback. All right. <laughs> You're smiling just right, bro. Appreciate. I know. I know. Oh, okay. We have this checklist. Tori and I have this like checklist of shit that we're supposed to do. Uh, one of which is don't drop S-bombs. And I'm like, I never checked that one off. Um, and another is, uh, you want it to stay? Oh, I see, gotcha. You're, 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 you'll get there. You'll get there lemony, lemony cricket fast. Man, there's a whole bunch of stuff going on because I'm like, what's everybody talking about? <laughs> um, oh, T's birthday is November 26th? Man. Um, I was trying to do the face, but when you do the face, you, your eyes close. And then all of a sudden it's like, and I'm like, what happened? Um, Val, be good, be good, be good, be safe. And uh, we're all we're all rooting for you to get into a good, safe, chill, beautiful space as soon as possible. Pete, turn your turn your chat off. That's gonna distract you, Pete. Now, I wanna try something here. I wanna try something here. Bye loves, bye loves. Everybody say bye loves with a British accent. So it's awkward. Bye loves. Bye, loves. Love you, Val. Or we could say, um, hasta la próxima. Vale, vale. Te veo más tarde. Dude, we should do like a whole stream in Spanish. You're like, what's that guy doing speaking Spanish? Um, Chao, Val. Mucho amor. That's another way to do it, dude. Bye, loves. That was good, Keith. Man, there's like a whole skill set of like, how do you do weird accents, but type them? Hey, Leslie, I see you over there. Um, do you want to do you want to come on and just chitty chat for a couple minutes before we start talking like serious stuff about design and how people make things look good? Um, just seeing who's in the who's in the who's in the room. What's up, Freddie? Good to see you, bro. Um, I want to I want to do something with you guys. So this is a really special stream for a number of reasons. One is we've got an incredible, incredible, um, I mean, a lot of times we have incredible experts on here, but I think this is really the first time we've had like a design expert and um, a real sort of deep dive conversation about design. Design meaning is just a sort of a fancy word for how, how things look. Is that fair, um, Leslie? I don't know if you can type easily and, and do stuff. But Leslie's coming on in a couple minutes. Leslie Morgan is a design specialist who's worked in the music industry for quite a while. Um, and we're going to talk about how to make things look nice. Um, websites, live streams, social, uh, et cetera. Logos, colors, all that kind of good stuff. So what I thought would be fun is to do a really bad British accent and then bring on someone who's got a really good British accent, which is, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Emma McGann. No, no one's heard of her. Nobody? That's, this is gonna be a, a, a big stream then. Okay, so this is her website on my iPhone, whatever the fuck this is. So tiny iPhone, right? And I'm, 
you know, so this is the mobile version. Um, right on. Appreciate that, Donnie. Thanks for warming up our green room back there. So, so this is this is one of our A-listers in the UNow space. <laughs> Thanks, Leslie, for becoming a fan. The reason I'm showing you this is we're going to talk about this today. I figured we'll spend maybe the first half of this just talking about what the hell is design and how have you kind of done the things you've done in the in the industry um, with our amazing guest. And then we're literally going to talk about this website. Okay, cool, awesome, good to hear. We'll bring you on in a sec. So I just want to show this off because it's kind of awkward and awesome for me to just stand here and shove my phone in everybody's screen right now. But if you go on to um, just type emmamagan.com, as, as you're sort of listening and watching, I think it'd be cool for everyone to take a look at this and just take it in because it's fucking rad. This is a really, really good website. And we're going to talk about why and what you can learn from it. And um, we're actually going to have Emma on shortly so that the two two are, are some, two of the smartest design people I know in my life, Emma and Leslie, are going to chat about what makes this work, right? So one thing that might be cool is like if you see something on here and you're like, wow, I really like, you know, I really like how they did that photo at the top and how it sort of takes up the first half of the page. Or I really like how, um, you know, it's, it's the color scheme is consistent with this blue and red. I really like how it's quite a bit of information, but somehow it's not overloading my brain and my eyes. If there's something about this that you like that you can pinpoint. Maybe we can talk about how did they do that? Because it's usually harder to do this stuff than it seems. And um, anyway, it'll be super fun. I'm going to try and stay out of the way and let these two brilliant people talk to each other. Um, and I'm glad everybody's on here. So, um, Tori, help me do this, but I'm going to try and keep an eye on your questions. If you guys have specific questions, it could be anything about the industry, about how Leslie's done her thing um, in the industry, working in management and design and marketing with musicians and artists and um, different kinds of projects. Um, if it's how do I get my website to look as good as blah, blah, blah. Why is it that uh, so-and-so's logo seems better than the so-and-so logo or anything specific about design? I'll try and keep an eye on what you guys are asking. And, um, and y'all ready? Let's do it. Let's do. Yes, thank you. So we've got emmamcgann.com. I would recommend y'all just tap on that real quickly, take a quick peek at that so you can sort of understand what we'll be talking about. Born ready, dude. Can you imagine that? Baby pops out. And he's, she, he's like, Born ready. It's like, damn. He, he literally just popped out and said that. Unbelievable. Plum Creative Consulting, thank you, is Leslie's website. Um, also, if you go on to Plum Creative Consulting, there's a... Um, a menu item called press. I had the distinct pleasure of interviewing Leslie two months ago now. Um, and uh, so there's a kind of an in-depth, if, if you're interested in checking out a little bit more of her backstory and who she's worked with and also some really, really good tips on design. So without further ado, you ready, Leslie? Let's go. <sighs> This is fun. I got two devices and they're actually working today. Hey, Leslie. Hi, everybody. Hey, Peter. Hi, everybody. Oh, man, I'm so excited. So we've, I don't know how many hours we've talked in the last six months, but it's probably oh, clocked in. It's probably 200, maybe. I Over 100. Surprised. I Over mean, a fucking 100 hours. Every time, yeah. Every time. Yeah get on the phone it's like two hours like will fly by yep that's a very nice way of saying it <laughs> so but I, I like we've never hung out it's such a weird time that like th there's so many people in my life and excuse me the hair is amazing oh Complete, thank you. everybody everybody except the fact that you're in love with their hair just own the, it the, the cut is pretty new um 
the color I've been working that for a little while now. I like it. Out, you know, a year with occasional blue or silver happening. I like it. But I like the so, pink. I like the pink. So, so let me ask you something because let's get into hair right now. I'm getting my hair cut tomorrow, as you can clearly tell by this hat. I'm not trying to be Jimmy Iovine. I just really need a haircut. Okay. And what I'm curious about is if you're a design professional, are you a complete pain in the ass to get it, to give a haircut for? Because are you like, no, I, I need a streak just that way, but more diagonal. <laughs> you know, it took me a long, long time of trial and error, but I found somebody who's amazing and she totally gets it. So I just have to like tell her, um, I think I want to try something a little shorter this time. And she'll be like, oh, yeah. And then I'll come out like exactly somehow she read my mind and it comes out exactly how I wanted it. So I'm very lucky. It took one more reason to move. One more reason to move to, uh, to New York. Or Jersey City, to be exact. New York, Jersey City, same thing. thing. It's like almost like an extra borough, but across the river. Thank you for the likes, McKayla's mom. Um, hey, Kim. Whoa, 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 whoa. What's going on, guys? Let me catch up on the, on the chat a little bit. I've been just focusing on Leslie's hair for the last little bit. Um, <laughs> thanks for becoming a fan, McKay, Keith. Appreciate you uh, giving some, uh, some fan love to... Leslie, jaded, thank you. Um, so what, what is design? Let's talk about like what it is that we're gonna talk about today. How would you define, you've worked in it for a long time and if I try and define it, it'll take two hours. So I'm gonna let you define it. What, what is design? What are we talking about? Well, why don't you start out like really easy? No, I'm kidding. Um, that that is like one of the hardest questions ever but um oh. basically design the way that i look at it is um the visual representation of a person or an entity um that reflects what they are all about and who they are so it's in a way i mean it's almost like similar to a haircut like you, you, as the person that you're trying to give them a look and feel, you're trying to sort of interpret, well, I think this will look good for you. How, how do you, um, I guess, let me, let me ask it a couple different ways. Let's look at it from the sort of the client's perspective or for someone that's trying to sort of polish their design and understand their design. Mm -hmm. If someone's like, okay, well, I have a website. I guess it works okay. It looks fine. I have this logo. It seems to work. Like, how does someone even get a sense of looking at their own design and, and seeing it clearly? Does that make sense? Yes, very much so. And, um, you know, I'm glad that you mentioned the hair because it is a very, a very visual um, industry, the music industry. Um, it's, it's super important um, to work on everything from the way you look to the way your website's going to look. Um, that's why I loved Emma so much because everything is together. Everything um, is consistent and super cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, the most important thing is that it should reflect who you are. Um, and, you know, just like you grew up hearing just be yourself, um, I think that that's probably the best advice to give an artist. Um, or give anyone, but especially an artist, because um, they're, you know, they're putting their heart out there. You know, they're, they're doing it with their art. And um, they need to sometimes pay attention to how that looks to the public. Right. And that's really important. And that's where a good design can come in to play. Um, you know, everything from a logo, um, even if it's your name, um, a consistent... Uh, color or typeface, um, you know, if you have a band or something, then 
it can represent the entire unit. But even if you're a solo artist and you only, you know, are using your name, um, then I think it's still super important to reflect who you are um, visually. And that could be a, start with a logo and carry over into um, everything from your website, um, your, uh, your social, your, um, your product, if you do vinyl or CDs or something like that. Yep. Um, and, you know, in the, in the previous world of live music, um, your stage presence, um, you know, what kind of backdrop or visuals or, you know, um, video are you going to have behind you? Um, all that stuff is super important. Um, and, you know, I have a lot of experience uh, designing stage, um, hmm. stages for live shows. Um, and, you know, I do kind of feel a little sad that that's, you know, on hold right now. But I do think that the live stream world is a good opportunity to reach a lot of people. Um, you certainly have the opportunity to uh, reach people globally um, instead of just right there on the spot. But yet you give them that life experience, that feeling of um, getting to know you as an artist uh, right. through, through your performance. So, so you mentioned something, you used the word together, right? Mm -hmm. So so sort of like having a website together, having a, a logo or this all these sort of family of different properties be together. And actually, I just want to sort of, um, sort of acknowledge some people. So Keith, thank you for bringing your friends over. Um, thank you guys. Um, um, McKay, thanks for the props on the hair. Um, by the way, these are interview segments. So for those of you that aren't sort of regulars or familiar with our format, we do kind of like a Q&A um, with someone for a bit. And then we have sort of time sort of before and after that to bring people on and chat in a little more free form. So just so you guys know, like, um, although we will have them on, but that was kind of a planned thing. So um, it's so much more personal than touring. It's, it's interesting. So Keith... It's really an interesting room we have here. When I say room, I mean like the people that are that are in here with us that are sort of in the virtual room. To me, I use the word room because that's how it feels, right? So like Kim Maverick is a um, experienced performer who play who has played you know regularly in different venues, including Hell at the Moon, the dueling piano mm -hmm. um, venue. Keith Peluso is the vocalist for Blood, Sweat, and Tears. Wow. So. So like, we've got some heavy talent here. Emma's gonna be coming on in 20 minutes. And she was doing, I mean, she had a whole global tour before the pandemic hit. The point I wanna make though about that is that you were saying that there's this kind of transition we're making into the live streaming world where, you know, it's not the same level of staging as before. I almost wonder if you look at the way um, Emma, and James together as a team have put together her look for her stage or the way Keith does his vibe with his studio or even the way Kim has things set up with her open mics and different things she does. I wonder if to a certain extent, like you can actually be more adventurous with your visuals because you can literally change the whole stage in a matter of minutes. Do you feel like what, what are the opportunities for staging now that excite you about the artists being able to sort of get their look and their presentation more, more expressive than it was before when you were doing traditional touring? Sure. Um, well, there's sort of two levels to it. One is where you're physically um, performing. Um, you might want to think about putting something behind you or something in the room that reflects who you are. Because believe me, when I'm watching a live stream and people are doing it from their living room, I'm looking around. I'm seeing what kind of furniture they have, <laughs> what kind yep. of paintings are on the walls or, you know, artwork, whatever. Um, so, you know, maybe you don't want that distraction. Maybe you want to think about putting um, a simple background or something that um, reflects, you know, who you are the way you would maybe put a backdrop um, behind you on a big stage. Yeah. Uh, but I would definitely consider that. And then uh, you also have the opportunity to, um, to customize your widgets, your overlays, things that are, you know, uh, uh, 
uh, just on the um, on the live stream world. Um, right. And that's super important because fans, you know, like to feel like they're participating. And I think right. that's probably the most positive thing about uh, moving to live streaming um, is that you get to interact with your fans. Um, you know, as opposed to being in a giant venue or something, maybe in a small club, you would interact with them, but not as many at, at, at a time. Um, so, you know, if you give them something fun to uh, look at while you're performing or just to um, enhance what you're doing, I think it's a real positive thing. And let them read what's on your bookshelf. And, yeah. uh, you know, Tori's <laughs> like, I like to see what they're reading right now. I should set up a whole bookshelf. The problem with me is I have too much stuff on Kindle now. I have very few books. Oh, um, yeah, too. I'm doing that as well. But I laugh when, you like, so many people on TV are, like, in front of their bookcase. It's like, look at me. I'm smart. Oh, I interesting. Read, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I probably, I don't know. I mean, I probably buy five books a month, but I buy them as Kindle, so I don't have any... You could green screen a bookshelf. That sounds really, you could green screen like super cool glasses. So you're like, wow, that guy seems really smart. There's a lot you could These do. are some really good ideas. Cool. Um, so, so I wanted to, to let you also talk about, because you mentioned like um, smaller venues. I want people to get a vibe on like your musical background. One of the coolest parts about our interview was like, learning about where you come from musically okay. and how that's influenced you. So like for, for people that are here and meeting you for the first time and maybe haven't read the article, um, which is by the way, is available at, um, Hey Emma, thank you for uh, popping in and joining us. Thanks I, Kim. Tell us about your musical background. Okay. Um, well, um, I grew up actually listening to country music because my father was from Kentucky and relocated to New York when he met my mother, who was from Greenpoint, um, Brooklyn, and they hooked up, got married, he moved here. But he just, he loved like, you know, the Hank Williams and Johnny Cash and George Jones and like all that like kind of cool uh, traditional country stuff. So I grew up with that and, you know, just by hearing it so much, I, I love it. Um, and then from there, um, I would say I got kind of into the punk scene in New York. Um, pretty early on, um, you know, I remember going to see my first show at CBGB's was the, um, the Dead Boys and the Dictators, um, which is, was a pretty good introduction into that. Same program. show? One big show? Yep. Yep. Oof, double it, feature. It was completely wild. Um, were you and, wearing your Doc Martens? How did you roll in? No, I was like still, I was really young. Um, you know, I was like 16, 17. So I'm like. That was my Doc Martin phase. I don't know <laughs> when oh, yours okay. was, but that's when I was, that's when I thought, oh, I got to wear these. Because I remember walking in with like a yellow blouse on and like flowers in my hair, like <laughs> still, still kind of hippie. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, bohemian. And, and feeling like, oh man, look at all these people, like what am I doing here? But I loved it and that changed me so much. And, hmm. um, you know, you know hanging out at CBs became like a second home for me. And, you know, I just, um, I really have always loved clubs for live music, um, much more Why? so. Why? Uh, just because of the experience of, seeing it up close and small like that. Um, I, I remember I, you know, I, I've gone obviously to like really big arena shows as well, but I never feel like I enjoy it as much as when I was in a tiny club. Um, the whole atmosphere, you know, the, the, well, in those days, the smoke, the drinking, the, you know, the, the interaction you could have, you could, you know, move around a lot more, talk to your friends, um, go up front and see the band. You know, I just, I just loved it as a culture. Yeah. I wonder what's interesting for me too, is like as live streaming and it's not like live streaming started six months ago, but for a lot of us in the music industry, it feels like it did. Right. Mm -hmm. um, 
myself certainly included, like I didn't know much about this world at all six months ago, right? So I, what's exciting to me is in a year or two or three as the platform as a global phenomenon gets more legs, I think yeah. some of those things that you're talking about, there will be versions of it. There will be a way to do some, hopefully, some of those things that um, that made live club shows mm-hmm. that that fun, that unique. Yeah, actually, you know, I noticed that that um, first of all, it's way more intimate than a large arena show. Yep. Um, and I like that a lot. And so, um, you know, anybody can do it. I mean, if you're at the stage in your career where even filling the club might be difficult for you, um, you can go online and have, you know, endless people signing up and seeing you. Right. Um, it gives you an opportunity to um, actually market yourself, you know, in a broader way. Right. Right. Um, so for those of you that are on here, um, we're actually going to bring on Emma again in about uh, 12 minutes or so. Um, you guys could sort of chat about a little bit on her website, what's making it work, what's making it snap together so nicely. For those of you that may have questions, again, we're talking, if you just come in or you're kind of getting oriented to the room a little bit, um, we're talking with Leslie Morgan, who is a design specialist. Um, she helps She's helped, I mean, you've worked with a lot of different labels and, and, mm-hmm. and artists to get their logos, to get their websites, to get their live shows looking right. So if you guys have questions about, okay, um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get my new logo together, but I'm not sure if I should go this way or that way. Um, mm-hmm. If you guys have open-ended questions that you want to ask, one thing I might ask as kind of a place to get us started is like, Again, how do you sort of assess if you're trying to think about, okay, I, I feel like I need a logo. Mm-hmm. What are some things that you encourage a creative person to ask of themselves to get a vibe on like, should the logo be sort of hip? Should it be professional? Should it be, you know, lo-fi? Should it be this or that? Like, are there sort of questions that you that you give to clients and to people that you're talking with about like, okay, here are some things to think about to get a sense of like where you might want to move with your look and feel for what you're doing. Well, you know, obviously I adapt for different clients. Um, You know, I I do occasionally have corporate clients and that's a whole different um, set of questions, but for people who are artists or musicians or producers, um, you know, it's, it's really a matter of getting to know them. So it's almost like a casual conversation where, um, you know, I'm asking them about um, what they want, what their music is all about, what they're trying to say as an artist. Um, and obviously you want to listen to the music as well. Um, because I think that um, for a musical artist, um, that's the key is the authenticity of who they are has to come out. Um, right. You can't have... Uh, a logo that doesn't represent who you are because it's just going to mislead people. They're going to think they, you know, they're in the wrong place. Um, you know, it has to be who you are. But you gave point- a really, you gave a really cool example from the article that I want to just throw out there for those of you that either haven't read it or whatever. Um, you compared the Twitch logo to the bands in town logo, just as an example of like, here's some things that are kind of cool about this logo and here's some things that are maybe not totally taking advantage of what they could do with this other logo. Talk a little bit just so, so for people that, let me see if I can pull it up real fast for you guys, but describe the Twitch logo and I'll pull it up so people can just take a peek at it and remind themselves and then describe what you like about the bands in town logo. Okay. Um, I do remember uh, really liking the bands in town logo and their page um but the logo i think is super cool it's like the the ram's horn you know hand that is just you know associated with live music um and i just think that's a really cool logo it's something that will work across um all different 
areas of output. And that's super important too. That's one of the things that I always stress is that um, when you're designing a logo or any artwork, keep in mind that you want it to work on your website, your social, you want it to work printed on a t-shirt, a mug, um, you know, uh, on a banner, um, pretty what, much. What do you, sorry, hmm. what do you like about this logo? Like specifically? Well, I like that. I like it because it represents who they are. I mean, it's live music. So when I look at that, I think of live music. I mean, it's, it's simple. Um, you know, it, you don't have to overthink it. I think simplicity is really, really important. Um, don't muddy things up. Don't confuse things by adding too many elements or too many colors or, you know, um, too many what about What about the font? You had mentioned some things about the font that you liked. Oh, yeah. I mean, I love the lowercase font. Um, I just think that's super modern. And it also really works well in small spaces. Um, because when you think about it, if you were going to have all caps um, in a small space, that would really not be very readable. Um, right. Bands in Town is kind of a longish name. It's, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's like yeah, 12 I, letters. Right. I wouldn't be surprised if they had a stacked version of that as well. If the designer mm. is is worth anything, um, they should have a stack. what? what I call a stacked version of a logo, which is where the type is vertical. Hello? Oh, we're back. Um, yeah, wow, well, somebody here um, on the comment is mentioning that a stacked version can be difficult to kern. So obviously they know- We got some pros in the room, <laughs> I'm telling you. They know that- not they messing around. Be. Yay. Um, yes, uh, but you you want to kern it properly. Um, so what, define stack and define kern for those of us that are like, what okay. the hell's going on right now? Well, a stacked logo generally is a logo where the type is um, broken down into rows um and kerning is the space between the letters so um you might want to spread the letters out to fill in a space or condense the space to make it smaller without you also had commented sorry i'm gonna interrupt you um yeah i, I also had commented about the the color this sort of green turquoise light turquoise i don't know what that yeah. is I mean, I liked that. It's, you know, um, it's a cool color. I mean, I think it just really works for the site. Um, it uh -huh. keeps it bright and upbeat. And it's not, um, I mean, it's easy to tell that that's like a upbeat, um, positive kind of look. You also had uh, mentioned some things you liked about Bands in Town, the website right? How it was designed, right? So again, this is on mobile. So it's even more important that it be designed a particular way. Right. So it's, it's easy to digest, but you know, I, what did I'm, you like? Do you remember what you liked about their site? Well, I mean, with any site, I think that when you go to the homepage, you have to be able to decipher it fairly yep. quickly. And I found theirs very easy to do that. I mean, I think they had a, a hero banner or something at the top where right. they had a featured uh, show. And yep. that's cool because you want to be able to offer that um, as a marketing tool um, to different artists. Right. Uh, but then below that, uh, I think they had it organized by genre. Um, yeah, it's sort of by almost like by category. So there's like popular live streams, recent news, you know, events by genre, concerts by date, you right. know, but it's like, it's sort of like, you know, um, there there's a way for someone to get quickly oriented. Oh, that's what I'm looking for and move into that, not sort of swim around and try and not know where they're going, right? right. Exactly. And I, um, I think some of the sites that we looked at, Peter, um, the, the homepage was a little confusing and, or it was overloaded or, you right. know, it was. So 
So I, just by way of comparison and, and no hate intended for any reason yeah. whatsoever, but just by way of comparison, right? Like the Twitch, um, the logo, which you guys are probably somewhat familiar with. I'm gonna just open it up. Um, is this sort of purple, electric purple, right? Yeah. Um, so, so what did you, what were your thoughts on, on the Twitch logo? And then also like how Twitch, and I can see even just from the time that we wrote this article with you in the last few weeks, really, that they've constantly been sort of tweaking it a little bit, but yeah. it more or less behaves the way it did. Oh no. Uh, there I am, I'm back. Um, so w yeah. what are some thoughts on the logo and their website? Okay, I remember, I really liked their logo. Um, I liked the purple because uh, my own branding color is purple. Um, but beyond personal taste, um, I think the logo is super cool with the drop shadow. Um, yeah. And considering that, you know, that they came from sort of a gaming community, um, and now they're like into music. I think that logo speaks to both audiences. Mm -hmm. It almost looks it almost looks a little comic uh, comic book like, and yep. I think that's kind of a really good look for their for their audience. I think that would be appreciated. And then you have right. sort of the little bubble next to it. Again, that looks kind of like old school comic. Yep, and I like it a lot. 100%. Um, and so again, I remember with the Twitch website, it was, they've, I think they've, I feel like they've organized it a little bit more, I guess, aggressively than they, than they had previously. Um, but it's still, I think to your comment that, that you sort of had in the article that it's a little overwhelming when you first go on to Twitch's website, there's just a whole bunch of channels. Oh, it's right. not as curated up front as say um, bands in town yeah and and that can be good or bad I suppose but it, yeah it, I mean it, it gives you the opportunity to explore outside maybe the genre that you would go straight to right um, so that could be a good thing yeah I mean for what it's worth I think you now sort of behaves that way too and that's part of what makes it sort of work in a way is when you go on to you now it's very in the moment. It's who's trending or hot right now of the people I've fanned, who's live right now. Every time you go onto YouNow's website, it's, it's different. And mm -hmm. then there's banners that tell you, hey, did you know about this? Did you know about that? So it's not curated the way like a Bands in Town is, or, but it's, it's very sort of like, hey, did you know about this? Or this person's popping right now, or like it, it has a sort of a, its own way of doing that stuff. Um, right. Cool. So anyway, um, love that you guys are here. If you guys have any sort of last questions for Leslie before we bring Emma on, um, this is going to be really fun. And they're just going to chat on sort of what makes Emma's, there's so many things. I mean, we could probably do a two hour stream on why Emma's look and feel on her website and her shows <laughs> and her albums and her art and everything sort of is together in your words. Um, so if you guys have any specific questions, pop them in there. I'll try and keep an eye on stuff as, as we're going to as well. Um, so, so Leslie, would you have any other sort of, I guess, final comments for creative people that are trying to either maybe understand logos and design? Um, mm -hmm. are there some good examples? Is there, is there some books you might recommend? Is there like anything that people could think about as far as how to understand it a little better? Sure. Um, first of all, like I said before, it has to represent you, be authentic. And I think that in this case, it's good to work with somebody who is a designer, um, who does this for a living, who, yep. you, who you feel comfortable with and you feel gets what you're about, because that's super important. Um, and then the other thing is once you find art that you like, um, be consistent. Uh, make sure it's on everything. Make sure it's on, you know, your social, um, your website, your evites, um, you know, whatever you're doing. Um, that's one of the things that Emma has got down. Um, is that she's, yeah. she is consistent, you know, and amazing 
amazing artwork. Yeah, and so that's a really good um, seg to bring her on. I would also say, um, I mean, so, you know, Leslie, we've worked together on a, with a handful of our advertising clients for the publications. Mm -hmm. And the, the thing that comes to my mind when I'm listening to your answer and I'm thinking about it from, from my perspective is just like with a music producer, you want someone that kind of gets you on some levels even better than you get yourself in their field. Right. That you can say, I want it to be blah. And you're like, I don't even know what that means. And that person goes, I, I think I know what you mean. And there's not a lot of noise. And that's just a person to person chemistry background. Mm -hmm. I've, I've listened to a thousand punk records. I know what you mean. I've been to those clubs. I know what you're saying. You yep. need to be with someone that kind of can read your mind a little bit. That would be my being on the other side of the glass a little bit. And yeah. I'm not a design person. I'm not a, but I, I, you know, I, I would say work with someone that seems to, to really be able to decipher your ideas and can love on your ideas in ways right. that, you, you know what I mean? And clarify your own thoughts and things. Yes, um, um, because that's definitely part of the process is right. for the designer to get to know you and interpret what, you, uh, what you're all about better than maybe you would yourself. Thank you, Kim. <laughs> Um, Emma, do me a huge favor and raise your hand. We'll bring you on. Thank you so much, Kim. Hey. Yes. Yes. This is another <laughs> one of my dream, about every couple of weeks I have like a major dream come true moment. And it's like, oh, you know what would be really cool? It's like, we'll get like, I don't know, like, like Leslie Morgan and Emma McGann talking about branding and design on a stream together. <laughs> so, hey, how are oh, you? Awesome. What's going on? I'm good. I'm, I'm doing good. Thank you. Hi, Leslie, by the way. Nice to meet oh, you. Hi. Nice to meet hey. you. You have a new fan. Yeah, I've... <laughs> <laughs> I'm a new fan of yours as well. It's lovely to have you here. Um, yeah, so I've just been, um, we've actually been upgrading some lights in the studio today and yesterday, um, but I've, I've kind of packed it in for the weekend now. I can just concentrate on streaming and writing now. So yeah, it's all, it's all good. Busy, but good. <laughs> One of the things that's cool about Emma is that she's always experimenting and she's always like, you know what, why don't we try this? Why don't we try that? What if we do this? Why don't we try some different lights? Why don't we try a can where I'm shooting and I'm trying to put a thing, you know, get, there's always something new going on. So like, I, maybe one question is sort of, and what I really want to do is just let you guys talk and stay out of the way, to be honest. But I'll start with one sort of warm up, maybe question is like, Emma, when you're looking at new ideas, hey, we could try the lights a different color. We could try, okay, we've been doing forest for a while. What if we did put it on the moon, whatever. How do you know the difference between that's an idea that kind of fits the overall vibe that I'm about? and feels authentic, but sort of new and weird and cool versus something that's like, I don't know if that really resonates. I'm not even sure if that's worth trying. What's the difference between something that's like, let's try that and see if it breaks or not, or something that's like, I'm just not sure that feels right. Can you, can you sort of describe how you know the difference between those two? Yeah, I guess um, if we're talking about like the set that I've got here for the live streams, this is uh, essentially kind of turned into my own little music venue uh, for the last six months because I've been hosting virtual shows here. So it's been kind of fun to uh, be in charge of my own venue <laughs> and be the mm -hmm. boss. And like I get to tell me when I go on stage and stuff like that. Um, but if we're talking about um, the lights and the set behind me and how it all kind of ties in, um, with, uh, I guess, my image on, on the website. Um, I wanted everything to kind of uh, be very much kind of in line, if that makes sense, but also fun for the community, for, fun for people. Um, so, I mean, some of the lights that I have aren't necessarily directly um, correlated with, like, I would say my branding. So we have like a light thing called Alien Invasion which has like no, no connection to me or my music or anything, but it's just like, it's just for, for the fans and the viewers to just have fun with. Um, but the kind of foundation of everything has always been this kind of neon jungle. Um, and the reason I went for this kind of look is number one, because um, I'm very much in tune with uh, uh, kind of, 
I, I work with some charities uh, that handle a lot of things around deforestation. There's a fantastic charity called uh, One Tree Planted, who uh, plant trees not just in America but all around the world. And it's a, it's a cause that's very close to close to me, uh, and something that we were raising money for via the virtual tour pass. But also aesthetically, with the look of uh, the EP that I'm w working towards at the moment, um, that aesthetic that kind of existed there was very neon jungle. So uh, like it was something that I knew I wanted to kind of keep consistent with what I'm doing online because I'm here every single day. And um, if I had the, the kind of tools to be able to do it, I wanted to, to do it, uh, but also bring in some cool elements where the audience is in control. Um, I feel like it's, I don't just want to be another person with a guitar, if that makes sense. So, um, and that's always been, I think, something that has been uh, in the back of my mind as an artist for many, many years. I've never just wanted to be a girl on guitar and that's it. I've always wanted to kind of build on the music side of things from an arrangement point of view and make things big so that when we do rock up to a club or we rock up to a festival, that that sound is, um, it sounds just as big as what it is uh, than the you know it's exactly the same as the studio version and I kind of look at things the same way when I present myself online I guess so when it came to the website I knew that um, a lot of the design there I wanted to keep simple because um, most of the content that exists on the website is simple I'm just hosting a lot of my music videos over there a bio page um, actually, the most complex thing about the website is just the virtual tour pass uh, back end, which uh, people can access yeah. when they get a pass. Um, and, you know, the home page is uh, very, very, um, very focused on social. So there's a big Instagram grid there and all of my social kind of links and handles, which I think is really important to host at the top, in my opinion. Um, for me, the website, the most value that comes out of my website is uh, collecting email addresses. Um, so I can actually keep in contact with uh, the people that want to tune in and the people that want to listen. Because um, as we all know, social media, you know, or any any kind of platform out there can go like that tomorrow. And once they're gone, their users are gone. And I just feel like, you know, gathering emails is a really, really powerful thing to do and a really smart thing to do as an artist. Um, so I always encourage that people do that. So the newsletter side of things, so the Team McGann right thing that you see there is, is that a uh, newsletter sign up. Um, and, you know, there's the, there's little kind of elements of the the, um, the jungle. So the Monstera leaves just in the back, very subtle, nothing too in your face there. And, of course, the red and the blue. The, the biggest challenge for me, design-wise, with the red and the blue has been to try and stay away from looking too patriotic that is the own my been my like biggest oh, challenge really wow so i've tried to kind of certainly because i don't really want to come across as like really really patriotic if that makes sense so, so how have you done that is that just like okay we'll do like a an electric red or something like that that's not that doesn't look like this sort of flaggish red and blue so what I've tried to do is if, if I'm like hosting, maybe it's like a, a banner or, or a square thing uh, which has text on it. I won't necessarily always put red and blue next to each other. I'll like mm -hmm. dot it around just so it's not kind of all in one place. And uh, the branding is there, but it's there. It exists like uh, if you, you know, if you scroll from top to bottom, but it's not necessarily block red and block blue in your face like the whole time kind of thing. So, yeah, but, um, I think. Yeah. Go on, sir. <laughs> Um, no, I noticed that because um, it crossed my mind as well. I thought, hmm, red and blue, you know, what does that remind you of? But um, yeah. what I love about your website is that it's not always 100% red and 100% blue. There's a lot of um, shadowing and fades and sometimes where it kind of blends into purples. And, um, it, you know, I think that that's an excellent way to take it away from looking like a flag and you've done that beautifully thank you <laughs> gradients are <of> my friend <laughs> <laughs> so um leslie did you have any thoughts on what i think would be cool for people that are hanging with us is from a from a designer's perspective what is it that you see on on emma's site leslie that you could say you know this is something you guys could take away as some basic principles uh, in addition to what Emma just routed off, there's probably 10 different things you could learn from, but what, from yeah. your eyes, what are you seeing that's working so nicely? 
Okay. Well, I think she teaches all the bases. Um, she has consistent branding. Um, she's come up with even something as simple as two colors to represent her that um, you may not, not be something most people would think of um, works for her. And I think it's, um, it does show her personality. It's, I, I get a very um, sassy kind of girl power vibe from a lot <laughs> of what you are showing. Um, and I think that that's, you know, really important to represent yourself. And the way that you've carried it over into everything you do, I think is amazing. Um, and I just have a question for you, Emma. Did you, how much of a role did you have in getting all of this decided, and, you know, um, actual designing? Or did you work with a team or do you like have a, a manager or somebody who kind of handles this for you? So um, I work in a team of two, but... Um... And a lot of the people up in here know, know that person. His name is James and he's my manager. He's also my partner. But James is very much uh, the tech uh, person between the two of us. And then I'm the design person. So I'll, I, I kind of handle all of the, all of the graphics online uh, whenever we have uh, flyers to do, posters, merch uh, online, the website. Uh, lyric videos, everything in between. And the only reason I'm the, the sole person for design is because uh, I've done it for so long, but not professionally. Um, mm -hmm. I went to study graphic design uh, at university here in the UK. Mm -hmm. And about two months in, I realized that no, actually, I wanted to do music. So I actually quit that and then kind of, I found myself, I've always found myself juggling the two. Oh. Um, for me, the music kind of outweighed it, but I've always. Uh, done graphics in one way or another um, right. and that's kind of because of the music so it's all me really um, it's uh, it's definitely been uh, a developing thing over the years in terms of uh, you know building on those skills in Photoshop Adobe After Effects um, Premiere Pro everything um, yeah. it's been a huge learning process I think Early on, I definitely had the luxury of having time to sit and learn. So, you know, online, I would look at a lot of tutorials that existed on YouTube that I encourage any of you guys to check out as well. Um, when it comes to logos, um, all of the logos are done by me too. Um, and really, it's a, it, I kind of was teaching myself typography and all these different fonts and cursors and different things. Um, <laughs> Mostly because I'm a bit of a font nerd, like I, just anyway, like I like I'm one of those people that can just pick out like a font from something and just be like, oh, they shouldn't have used this. We drove past a pub the other day and it was using Papyrus as their <laughs> as their logo out the front, and it was absolutely awful. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I've I've always been the the kind of design person uh, out of our kind of team of two. Yeah. I know I do that all the time. I think it's just, you know, in my nature, like if I'm on a train and they have advertising sort of up on the, the walls or whatever, I critique it in my in my mind and I, I look at the fonts and think, oh, how could they have done that? You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, it, it makes me <laughs> that you were attracted to graphic design because I think a lot of creative people go in that direction as far as being musicians and artists at the same time. Um, and yeah. it's really cool that you got at least a couple of months of graphic design studying um, <laughs> under your belt. <laughs> I think <laughs> the fact that you were attracted to it, um, it means that I think there was something ingrained in you that gave you that ability to be very visual. Because, you know, I think that what you're doing is really working oh thank you thank you so much <laughs> emma are there things you're thinking about toying with to push the envelope a little bit more that um that are design oriented that um that that you can that you can share with us at this moment that you haven't done yet <laughs> um well like my thing with live streaming is uh, currently, I'm trying to um, 
think of different ways I can get the people at home to interact with the jungle. I think I've mentioned this before. Um, so like if somebody types something into the chat uh, or they do a specific uh, command, they already can control my lights when we're, when we're live streaming on Twitch. And uh, on you now, uh, my top fan uh, will always have the decision over the, what color they want the jungle to be. But um, I'm always thinking of like different ways that they can interact with what's behind me um, just to make it uh, just fully interactive. They could, it's interactive to a, a, a point where they can talk to me, but if they can change something physical in the room behind me, I think that's a really, really cool thing. I remember seeing um, there was a live stream. Uh, I don't even know where it was. I think it was on a, uh, oh my gosh, it was, it used to be this website about eight or seven, nine years ago. Um, I think it was just called Livestream. I think that was the website name. Mm -hmm. And they just used to stream random things. And I remember this, th th there was like this uh, cage of, I think it was like hamsters or something like that, small pets. And whenever you'd like um, type in a certain thing, it would like feed them a treat every every now and again, or like it would turn the camera around. So like, I was really fascinated by, you know, people like on the other side of the world being able to be like, oh, I can like interact like physically with what's happening like in front of me on the screen. I, I always thought that was really, really cool. So that's what we've tried to kind of incorporate into the jungle uh, with the lights uh, and everything else. So yeah, like we're thinking about uh, more along those lines uh, recently. Uh, to, to just to bring in some new interactive fun things for people to enjoy. Awesome. So we're starting to get some some great questions. Um, sorry, I see the nerd. I had your question in my mind that I spaced out. So really good question. What are some basic and you both answered probably uniquely in your own ways for someone that's just getting their head around design or wanting to learn sort of like, okay, what are the what are the key things that I want to understand about this? Um, Leslie, you can maybe kick us off. What is, are there books, websites, journals, magazines, people, brands? What would you, what would you hand to someone and say, look, check this out first? Right. Um, well, I'm a big fan of collecting things that I really like and to keep me inspired. So I always keep a little pile, whether it's uh, actual physical print items or, um, you know, things I find on the internet, um, just as an inspiration pile. And I think that it's important to look at things uh, other people have uh, done or designed and keep track of that. And maybe one day you will um, need to utilize something like that and you can use it as a reference. Beautiful. I mean, that's one of the things I ask people when I'm talking to them. I ask them, what do they like? Who do they like? Um, what inspires them? And yep. that, like, is sometimes that's almost all that you need because that just, like, opens the floodgates. And you can get to really know someone very well doing it that way. Awesome. Emma, what do you think? What are some good things to sort of kick off getting a better understanding of, like, design or what you want to do? Yeah, I would say, you know, um, you can always look towards some tutorials on YouTube. I think you can only learn a certain a certain way with that. I think getting your hands dirty and, you know, um, even if it's, a, if it's a free piece of software that you can kind of start getting uh, your head around, uh, just play around and uh, see what happens in terms of, like, uh, gathering inspiration. Um, I recommend Pinterest. I think... Wu-Tang Bunny, you've just mentioned Pinterest, great way to kind of create a mood board if there's a project you're working on or maybe you're trying to hash out new ideas for a logo or something. I use Pinterest for uh, just to create mood boards for music videos or uh, that's what we did with uh, this jungle uh, as well. We've got like a kind of mood board with lots of different images uh, for inspiration for that. Um, there's also a really great um, series on Netflix at the minute called Abstract. And it's not necessarily just graphic designers, it's artists, um, abstract artists uh, from all, the way, all over the world. I've only cool. watched one episode, but I watched it the other day and it was fantastic. So I recommend that as well. Amazing. Um, cool. So Wu-Tang, very good question about YouTubers. Kim had a question about overlays, which is an excellent one. One, I think it's sort of a two-part question, Kim. 
One is, what are your sort of overall thoughts, each of you, on overlays, how to use them, when to use them, et cetera? And then also specifically, I guess, Emma, you haven't really used overlays either very aggressively or maybe at all. So is there a particular reason for that? So Leslie, what do you, what do you think about overlays and sort of what are some thoughts on, on using them effectively? Um, well, what I know about overlays is that on a lot of the sites, um, you have to use their library. And I don't know if I would recommend that. Um, hmm. I would probably go for a custom overlay, um, either you know something that you've put together yourself or uh, a designer has. Um, yep. You know, because you, you, again, you want as much control over your uh, visual as possible. Um, mm -hmm. And whether or not you choose to use it really depends on who you are and what you're trying to say. Got some, got some love on your glasses there, Leslie. Emma, what, um, thank you, Farhan. <laughs> what, uh, what do you think about the overlay thing? What's your, what's, what's yeah, your Yeah, I on? think. I think the reason I don't use, I used to use overlays quite a lot. So I'll typically use an overlay when I'm gaming, uh, just to kind of outline uh, me if I'm in a little window, like over here or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. But other, other than that, um, I've kind of stayed, like come away from the overlays because I don't want the jungle to be uh, hidden. <laughs> I feel like it's um, almost too much. I don't want yep. to don't want to go over the board, and anything that I'd want to host on my overlays anyway here on you now specifically um, can, is more or less here anyway. So my socials are at the top when I go live. Uh, people, if they're especially if they're on PC, they're able to see all of the stuff that they need to see. If there's you know uh, on Twitch, it's a little bit different for me. So I'll host. Uh, recent donations and we have like a sub count uh, meter that automatically goes up and things like that and we also have what else do we have we have like um lots of lots of different things that you'd expect to expect from a stream so a be right back screen and uh stream ending soon and all these different things so i feel like uh the reason i don't use them here here on you now too much is because i like to let the jungle shine and just do its bit um but they can be super super helpful um and i would agree with leslie like you want to make sure that your overlay is, is custom and uh you don't necessarily want to use uh, um, an overlay from a library because other streamers will be using that and you want to you want to kind of show off your unique look and your brand if that's what you're work, working towards um so uh and, and you know they're easy enough to um create in photoshop um if you kind of are even if you're not well versed in photoshop an overlay should be pretty pretty easy to do um even if it's just from following again like a tutorial on youtube um but yeah, I, I recommend using them, but uh, yeah, I agree with Leslie. Make awesome. sure that they're unique to you. Freddie's look, looks like you're uh, working on a customer overlay as well right now. Um, I would like Emma for you to talk on uh, maybe some, I don't know if you have any favorite YouTubers that you like. I'm gonna take a quick two minute break, wink, wink, and I'll be back in a couple minutes. I'm just gonna go pee real fast. Um, but if you wanna talk on, um, like YouTubers or even just for, from either of your perspectives, um, you know, online properties that you think like these guys are doing it really nicely and here's why, right? And I'll be back shortly. Cool. Um, I think YouTuber wise, um, one, one that I'd recommend people check out would be uh, Jenna and Julian. They, uh, they host on Twitch. They're obviously over on YouTube, but they have, um, a lot of great graphics for and transitions for when uh, they're streaming. Um, transitions is another thing uh, that you want to kind of look into if uh, you want to make take things to the next level. And those transitions again, you want to look for something that's a, a little bit unique to you. Um, transitions usually uh, require you to animate, um, so um, I would recommend Adobe After Effects for that. Um, the Adobe Cloud. Um, Adobe software can be expensive, um, but the Adobe Cloud, um, if you uh, look at their kind of packages that they offer, if you get the Adobe Cloud, you can essentially uh, install whatever software under their name that you need. So maybe if it's Adobe Illustrator 
or uh, After Effects or whatever that is. You can download as you go. Um, top tip, uh, if you ever go to VidCon, uh, they always have people floating about who give you like um, discounts on, on uh, Adobe. So next year when it comes to VidCon, if you go, make sure you speak to Adobe staff because they give you mega crazy discounts. Um, on, a, on a, all the Adobe software. And if you're a student, you should be able to get um, some form of discount on Adobe software as well. Um, if, if you can't, then I'd be surprised, but uh, that's the case in the UK anyway, uh, if you're a student. Uh, so it should be over in the US as well. Um, but other YouTubers, um, Jenna and Julian, great uh, kind of uh, stream, stream that they host over on Twitch, great content on YouTube. But uh, when they do their streams, the overlays there, I mean, they look great. Really, really good kind of reference point if you're looking for some some ideas, I guess. <laughs> um, yeah, I agree with Emma about the Adobe Creative Suite. I mean, that's all you need is in Adobe Creative Suite um, if you want to kind of do your own design or, or just pursue um, design on any level. Um, I would suggest getting some uh, background, some academic background in design to kind of go along with that. Um, many, but many people have it kind of, you know, I think like Emma, um, you know, it's just kind of ingrained in, in who she is. Um, you know, I would tell you that I'm mostly self-taught. Um, I learned, I taught myself Photoshop and uh, Illustrator in design. Um, you know, even now, Sketch, Figma, um, all that stuff. So it's good. It's okay to be self-taught. Um, I, I did go back and take some classes at um, Carson School of Design here in New York to kind of almost catch up to where I was in my career. I mean, I was already designing um, at BMI before I ever took a lesson. So, um, you know, it can be done. It can be done. But... Um, I think that it sometimes makes it easier to get a little bit of a background in why you would use a certain typeface and why you um, shouldn't mix these two colors together or something like that. Um, that's always helpful. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, my I can only speak on, on what I, I try and only speak on, on what I know and have some sort of informed opinion about. So like from a music from the music side of things, I think it's been very useful for me to study theory and understand what Bach did and why that works and why certain jazz musicians or composers did certain things and why I like that or why I don't like that. And then that helps me, like you said, um, kind of break the rules and know what you're breaking and why you're breaking and when you're breaking and to what degree you're breaking things. So you can almost learn to push on things even more when you know what the official rules are first. Right. Uh, you know, um, so it's kind of helped to, oh, wow, is it already 11? Oh, my God. That was easily the fastest hour I've ever had in my life. <laughs> that, that was so much fun. Um, so, again, I appreciate both of you so much um, for your talent and just for who you are as people and your generosity as people. And so um, thank you very, very, very much for just hanging with us and um you know, when people do things really well, sometimes it's easy to just think, oh, that looks easy, so it's probably easy. It's not easy. Um, and both of you do what you do really well and very genuinely and, and generously and authentically. So I appreciate you both being here. Um, does anyone have any sort of last minute questions or final questions or comments for these guys? And please, hashtag for both of them, both for Leslie and for Emma. Thank you guys so much. Emma. <laughs> so what, what is, is that, is that you or is that a friend of yours, Emma Yenvu? I don't know who you are. So I just want to know, thank you so much. Keith, stop. <laughs> um, thank you, thank you, thank you, Emma Yenvu. Is that you? I just, I'm just curious. Is that you or is that one of your crew? Hey, me? Yeah, it says Emma Yenvu. Emma uh, Emma's been in my streams uh, recently, enjoying some music. Amazing. So, Amazing. Yeah. Thank you so, 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 so much. I just want to know who I'm talking to. Sometimes, like, I have a Peter Petro account as well, and then I have a Live on Live account, so I'm just always, like, 
um, wondering who I'm talking to and who's supporting us and stuff. Um, <laughs> that's funny. Um, so thank you guys for, uh, for being here. And um, any other last minute questions or comments for these two ladies um, before we wrap up? And thank you for being here. Any, uh, any other final things before we go? I mean, what's interesting about the backstory on this was that I was always admiring what, what Emma was doing. And I think, Leslie, you and I had a conversation, I don't know, a few months ago mm -hmm. about design. And maybe we could have something where you're talking about design for artists. And this is that. And I'm like, have you heard of Emma McGann? And you were like, I don't know. And I said, and it was like, oh, my God, this is like, this is exactly what people... So before they ever <laughs> met, I'm like, oh, this is like, this is, it's like a superhero story. Like, what if they were both, what if they met? <laughs> so, I'm super excited you guys were able to hang out a little bit. Um, this was fun. So I think it's one of those mysteries that people who are doing things creatively in music or live streaming, like how to, you know, how to make, how to make that whole thing come together is, is a bit of a mystery. So from what I, you know, am gathering, I think getting some good examples of things you like, Pinterest, find things, take pictures, take snapshots, whatever, find things you like, right? Yep. And, and then, you know, develop your own sort of. Um, profile pick with Wu-Tang logo, danger zone. Um, thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, what do you guys think about in terms of using the Wu Tang logo itself on the profile pic? Um, on a profile pic, it might be it might be okay in the, in that point, but I wouldn't use it as far as anything that was going to be commercial, um, right? Which basically means any thing that you do that causes you to make income um, you know yeah what it's used now it's like you're letting people know you're a fan i i i guess you know that you're <laughs> i would think yeah right right but you know if you were to use it on um on uh something merch or something that would make you uh have some income that would be a big no-no Mm -hmm. Right. And, and the way I would also look at that, almost putting my consultant hat on for a second is like, well, um, if you're making it a profile pic, I'm assuming what you're specifically referring to is like on a property, say you now or Instagram or whatever the case is, from a liability standpoint, it's probably more on the platforms, you know, like mm -hmm. Twitch or whoever has to make sure that if we're streaming music and we're using the original master that needs to get royalty payments in some way, shape or form that's been worked out. That's, you know, um, that's something that's, that's sort of who's liable for that is something that you want to sort of reflect on. But I think to Leslie's point, once someone starts making money off of that property, then it's a completely different game than you just kind of doing it recreationally from a legal standpoint, because now you're basically monetizing something that, ostensibly is not your property, but it's, so mm -hmm. it's one thing just almost from a legal standpoint, it's, it's who, who's liable for lack of a better word. And then all You'll have to repeat the last bit we lost. Jim. Sure. Yeah. So <laughs> What, what are your thoughts on that? Have you ever come across that issue or do you have any thoughts on copyright type stuff? Um, from the point perspective of logos and stuff, um, I've never really come up against anything myself because everything's kind of made custom. Um, yeah. But yeah, like as long as, you know, I, if, I, if I were to uh, host the Wu-Tang um, logo <laughs> on, as my profile picture, that wouldn't be so good because I like actually make money from the, the live streams and stuff. So that would, that's classed as commercial, right? So I can't do that. Um, but no, I haven't really uh, come up against any, anything uh, really. Yeah. And I think if you're going to create your own art, um, you know, make it original. Uh, you know, you could, you could uh, make it yellow. Uh, 
uh, to right. look like Wu Tang or you know give them a little love. Um, but generally, I would start with something new. That's right. All. It's kind of to your point a second ago that um, you know you want to do something that sort of um, reflects something unique about you. I mean, every probably creative person has influences and they maybe want to bring those with them or showcase them from time to time. Um, but um, I guess another way of looking at it is it puts a little bit of a um, limitation to what you can do with your brand and your property. So why would you do that? Why would you um, put something on there that can only go so far before it becomes an issue? Um, you might as well try and do something where it could grow as, as far and go as far as, as it possibly can and never hopefully come across, you know, issues like that, right? Um, Kim was saying a while back, I read a study um, that profile pics of your face always outperform logos. Interesting. Yeah, that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, I can believe that 100%. Yeah. I like um, on Instagram, uh, when I've got a new single, um, when I want to post the single artwork, I'll post a selfie and then also post the artwork after the selfie because your face is always going to get more, more clicks, more likes and things like that. And as long as that call to action is there, swipe across to see the artwork, people will, will be more inclined. I can totally, I, yeah, I can totally um, believe that. Yeah. Hey, break it. Right. See. So you actually posted it twice? Um, yeah, I would have probably posted it twice. Um, and the one with the selfie, they'll, that, they'll always get more interaction. Uh, you know, funny, I don't know, like, it's just one of those things. <laughs> I think um, people are less, uh, I feel like when people are scrolling on Instagram or whatever platform it is, and there's text over an image, I feel like maybe there's a little something that even if they see it in a blink of an eye, it's like, oh, add. Do you know what I mean? It was right. an ad. Like, scroll totally. past. So with like, that any artwork that I post, I always uh, usually do that. Well, on Instagram anyway. That's a good for idea. Sure, for sure, for sure. Uh, I think that we, that this particular group of people need to be really conscious of copyright issues because um, fellow artists, um, you know, you don't, you wouldn't want somebody ripping off your music or something. So, um, it's the same way with uh, visual properties. Um, That's also true. Yeah. So yeah. Careful. Right. So mm -hmm. uh, overall, I think I think the spirit of a lot of what you guys have said is, you know, customize stuff and do stuff that um, maybe is inspired from things you like, but have it be your own thing as much as possible. Um, so thank you so much for hanging with us. Welcome, Peter. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having us. Nice to meet you, Leslie. Oh, nice to meet you, Emma. It was a real pleasure. <laughs> you too. <laughs> Thank you, Peter. Hi, Peter. <laughs> He's frozen. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> oh, no. Leslie. Well, I'm not sure what just happened, but appreciate both you guys for being on here. Seemed like we just kind of like broke it right at the end, which is always what I like to do. Are you guys still on or am I just talking to myself? I could just talk to myself for a while. That's so fun too. 
anyway, um, thank you guys. Hopefully you guys learned a little something, something. Um, feel free to check in on our Discord. Thank you, Donnie. <laughs> um, I have a feeling you guys can hear me, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, cool. Okay, good. You can hear me. Ah, I'm back. Yo, cool. Oh my God. Um, I don't, so I'm not totally certain why it seems like it's been unusually glitchy this week. Um, my Wi-Fi is still like way faster than it has been in the past and we never had glitches like this before. So um, it might just be a you now thing. I know they're doing some dialing in of some things on the, on the back end. It seems like they're doing some things. So um, <laughs> this glitch is different though. Um, so we'll keep an eye on it. We'll keep an eye on it. Um, even that, like, why did that just freeze for a second? Um, I know, dude. I know it's getting a little aggressive. Um, anyways, yes, the Discord. Thank you, Tori. <laughs> Where's my sound? Um, so I've also, yeah, like our, inner, you know, the Wi-Fi speed is super, super fast. So I don't think it's on our end, but anyway, if you guys are still hanging out, um, thank you, Emma. And thank you, Leslie, for being here. Oh, thank you, Kim. Um, so I know that was probably a lot. I, I think I think sometimes our our streams when we get heavy with smart people, it's like, okay, that was a lot to think about. Um, so thank you guys for hanging with us. And if you have any sort of like questions or comments on things, um, you got an idea for next month? Ooh shit! Ooh shit! Oh, Fred, he's got some stuff on Discord. What, what? Really? That's awesome, Wu-Tang. Thank you. Hang on here at the end. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. But um, our streams are, we, we always, that's funny. We put them up on YouTube. Um, should be up by maybe midweek next week. Um, so you can go back and watch it. I would highly recommend it. I was trying to take notes. I think I took like three pages of notes. Um, so that was really super fun. Um, Freddie, I'd definitely be down to find out what you're up to. Um, that was fun. That was fun. I think we should, should we do more of those? Should we do more? I guess what I mean by that is like, would it be interesting to do more things that are more like strategy type streams for creative people, not exclusively music? Um, right on. Okay, I'm getting, I'm getting some yeses. Okay, cool. Um, I, I have a feeling everyone that's in the room here and that stays for more than five minutes has definitely got some nerd in their DNA or they're just like going to bounce. So I think everybody here <laughs> is somehow in touch with their inner nerd. Um, I think that's something we probably all have in common. Otherwise, we probably not going to hang on the stream for too long. Um, you're absolutely welcome to come on and chat about music for sure. Um, that's kind of our sweet spot. Um, that's true. It's not even subtle. It's not even subtle. You could make it N-E-R-D like all caps, but now you got copyright issues because you're like, what, are you N-E-R-D? It's like, no, dude, it's just the letters. And now you got the whole thing again. Whole thing again. Uh, so... I think we will do more strategy stuff. So that was on design. Should we do more of those? Are there other strategy things? I know um, Wu Tang, you've talked about marketing um, and sort of like how, how does the marketing piece of, of music and 
and streaming work. Um, oh, what's up, OG? Behind the curtains business stuff. Okay, okay. Hacks, business hacks, marketing, yes. That's two for marketing. He's a whiz on international law. Who is that? Who is a whiz on international law? Marketing for sure. We got a few votes for marketing. Oh, we should bring on Kiki as a guest. I'm glad that was your idea because then if I do it, I'm going to be like, Kiki, you should come on. He's like, why are you putting all this pressure on me? But I can be like, yo, Donnie said it. I didn't say it. I'm just, I'm just repeating what he said. That's what he said. I'm just the messenger. Uh, what's a skill if it isn't marketing? <laughs> what's that, 7,000? I hope you're just waking up. I hope you got lots and lots and lots and lots of sleep. This is Zomali. And I hope you go right back to sleep. Get some sleep, get some water, feel better, feel 100. We had a two hour stream with Sam. Whoa, that sounds pretty intense because Sam is like super positive energy, intense dude. So uh, I bet. Yeah, it's the Editor's Choice Festival, man. But take care of yourself, man. Take care of yourself. Self-care, self-care. I don't want to hear you like coughing in the background and like sneezing and like <laughs> having to lie down for 10 minutes in the middle of a stream. Okay, just take care of yourself. Promise us all. Um, all right, I'm done with my guilt trip. Um, business major, so stuff that I live for. Cool, interesting. So we could do um, uh, we could do sort of like more of um, strategy, um, marketing. Cool, that gives me some things to, to think about because I guess part of how these things come about, and Leslie's a good example, is when I'm just swimming around in, in my own world as a journalist and talking to different companies and people all the time, I'm sort of always in the back of my mind going, huh, I wonder if you'd be a good person to bring on. Um, yeah, marketing is a pretty broad topic, but I think I mean, even just the idea of like you guys wanting to learn more about marketing gives me something, gives me some, some taste of like what would be more interesting versus, for example, hey, let's bring on a bunch of people to talk about tech and audio recording and production techniques and mastering and mixing. Um, my guess is that might be interesting, but that might actually be less interesting overall. Um, than conversations like these where it's like, well, pretty much everyone has some kind of logo or design that they're working with, but not everyone wants to talk about like mixing a great snare drum sound. So um, anyway, I'm sure you guys will give me more um, of a sense of what you'd like to learn more about. Could I come up? Oh yeah. Do you want, do you want, do you want to come sing Autumn? You ready? To, you, you want to, you want to kick us off with a song? And then um, I got to bounce at 11.30, which is in 10 minutes, for those of you that are not on that PST, on that PDT, because it's daylight time. You want to come sing? Okay. I know. Thank you, Tori. You're amazed. Um, Autumn, while you're, while you're thinking about it, see you, Tori. Um, oh, you know, it's very interesting to me. <laughs> Right on, right on. See you, T. All right, let's do it. Um, cool. Get a little music. I like it. Hey, Otto. Hi. Hey, can you hear me okay? Yeah. La. So, tell, introduce yourself a little bit. Um, tell us about yourself. Ta -da. I'm Autumn. I'm 16, and I love to sing and act mainly. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Do you have um, certain kinds of songs or um, styles of music that you like to do at the moment? So mostly, most of my friends know me as the person who only sings Broadway songs. Okay. Because I'm kind of a Broadway nerd. That or pop. I love pop music, too. Love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it. So which one are you going to do for us today? I'm going to do Broadway. Love it. 
I'm going to sing a song called Proud of Your Boy from Aladdin because mm-hmm. it's one of my favorite songs currently. Say, Keith, thanks so much for being here with us, man. Sounds perfect. Okay, so I'm going to start the song. Buddy. I don't know how exactly, but I am. I have to. Somehow. Proud of your boy. I'll make you proud of your boy. Believe me, bad as I've been, ma, you're in for a pleasant surprise. I've wasted time, I've wasted me. So say I'm slow for my age, a late bloomer, okay, I agree that I've been one rotten kid. Some sun, some pride, and some joy. But I'll get over these lousing up, messing up, screwing up times. You'll see, ma, now comes the better part. Someone's gonna make good cross his stupid heart. Make good and finally make you proud of your boy. Tell me that I've been a louse and a loafer. You won't get a fight here, no man. Say I'm a gold brick, a goof off no good, but that can't be all that I am. Water flows under the bridge, let it pass, let it go. There's no good reason that you should believe me, not yet. I know, but someday and soon, I'll make you proud of your boy. Though I can't make myself taller, or hammer, or handsome, or wise. I'll do my best, what else can I do? Since I wasn't born perfect like dad or you. Mom, I will try to, try hard to make you proud of your boy. That's one of my favorites. Are you performing now? Like, I know school is kind of in a weird place. I don't know what part of the country you are or what, how, how it's working, but you're probably doing stuff kind of remotely now. Do you have an opportunity to, like, perform with people at the moment? Well, my school has decided that there won't be theater this year. Uh. They have made that decision, but they are allowing the sports kids to do sports. So my a bunch of my friends were like, well, if sports are allowed to start in December, should theater be allowed to start in December? So we are kind of uncertain if there's going to be theater or not. And so trying to get over the concept of no theater is making me disappointed. Um, is it is it something, the only reason I'm asking this is like, it's funny, I was walking around in my neighborhood a day or two ago and I noticed that someone had like a patio, an out outdoor like area and they were doing like an aerobics class mm-hmm. and there was like a legit class there was probably like six people and they were just doing like an informal like class and I'm like people have to do something like the gyms are closed you know you can only run around the neighborhood so much so like is there an opportunity for you to safely like hang with some friends and do what you need to do so it's safe but still like I don't know, sing together or do something that's a little more like well, informal. My school has said that we're going to do choir this year, but it's all going to be outdoor on our football field. So we're all going to be spread out. So I don't know how that's going to work, but it's better than nothing though. Right. It's, it's better be- than nothing. Yeah. Because at first they're like, we're not going to have choir. And I was like, yeah. well, that's not fair to us choir kids. Right. So what about live streaming? Do you feel like, um, I try to, but I've been so busy lately because yeah. I start school next week. So, like, okay, cool. that's a lot. And I have, I've been trying to catch up with friends that I haven't seen in forever. Yeah. Like, one of my best friends, this is me and my, this is me and my boyfriend, not my best friend. Nice. My boyfriend, and we met through theater. So, we're, like, everyone knows us. And so, it's, like, our thing to do theater together. And we're disappointed because he wanted to do theater this year and we were supposed to both get we wanted to both get lead parts in Mamma Mia so that we could do it together and I don't think that's gonna happen right 
It's going to be interesting. Do you, um, like, so you're probably, you're probably familiar with Sam, who does a lot of Broadway stuff here. Yes. <laughs> right? Are there, are, are there a lot of other people who do? I mean, I know Soph does some Broadway and some musicals. Sophella. Do you have, like, a crew of people on, on, on you now that are kind of like the Broadway crew that you hang with and sing with? Or no? Besides Sam, that's it. I'm, mm. I do Broadway. I've sang for 7,000 Apart before. Like, Amazing. I, awesome. I love 7,000 Apart. <laughs> They're my favorite right now. Yeah, legit. That's true. They're they're amazing. Do you they're do you know Sofella? Are you yeah, connected I've, with Sofella? Yeah, I've sang for Sofella here and there. Okay. It's just, yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's cool. I think I think one of the nice things about um, we have six that do Broadway, really. So who are they? It might be cool um, to just put those folks out there. Might just so you you may know them all already, but might be cool if there's a couple that you don't. I only know off the top of my head, I know Sam. Oh, come on, man. Donnie, do you, you know Donnie, right? Yeah. You know one okay. So he has this master list of like the matrix of, uh, I don't know, music creators on you now. Yeah. Sam is doing a one-man show. The um, Book he's... of Mor- he's doing the Book of Mormon, which is not, not, not a Broadway show that I like. Really? I'm very what's your, what's your favorite what's your favorite Broadway show of all time? Hamilton. Of all time it really? has to be. So did it? you see did you I'm assuming you saw Samilton? Yes, I did. I <laughs> Funny thing is Sam's mad at me cuz I can rap Guns and Ships and he can't. It's one of the Ooh, songs. I'd Hamilton. be mad too. I can rap it perfectly. Uh. It's not like it's not something I, I don't rap a lot. So like I learned it in 4 weeks. And I got it down perfectly. Nice. So I started looking at colleges. I have a list of colleges <clears throat> now. So what's your uh, what's your number one choice? My number one, number one choice is Montclair State in New Jersey. It's going to be awesome. interesting. Do you There's... want to study theater? or I want to do theater. My mm-hmm. Since I was in third grade, I think, my dream has been to be on Broadway since like I was little. So it's going to be exciting. That's <laughs> Kim says F college. Well, my friends were like, you really don't need to go to college. You can just audition for things. But like, I need the experience first. Is yeah. what I'm thinking. So. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what you guys in the room think. I mean, I, I have my own thoughts on it, but I'd be curious to hear what you guys um, for theater you really need college, Kim says. And Kim, you know Kim Maverick? Yes. Okay. Kim's a very good vocalist. And so uh, I think if she says that you need it, you can't really get the training anywhere else. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, here's where my mind goes with it. And I don't know anything about musical theater. Really, I don't. But I, you know, from a purely musician kind of perspective, what I've seen in my experiences at colleges and other people had at colleges, whether it's classical or jazz or Broadway or anything else, is who you study with mm-hmm. is probably more important than the college you go to. In other words, if you have a person at college blah, that you're like, that's the person that's going to get me there. They understand me. I love that person. I really respect that person. That could matter just as much as all the curriculum and the, and the classes and things like that. So I guess my question would be, do you know someone at Montclair that you're like, oh, that's the person I'll be studying with? No, it's just someone had recommended Montclair to me because mm. they knew I liked theater and they're like, it's one of the top 10 theater schools. Like you should check it out. I was like, okay. But there's one in New York that I was looking mm-hmm. at that there has been five different Broadway actors that have gone to that school and made it big in Broadway. So it's like, oh, that'd be cool to go there because there's actors that made it big from that college. Yeah. And plus you're, you said it's in New York, right? So I yeah. mean, just even just the energy of being in kind of the Broadway center of the world, um, I think is good. That, that DNA of the people that are walking in and out of that room is probably, 
Kim says, I would say if you can't get into one of the top 10 schools for theater, don't study. Interesting. It's such a competitive field. You need that cutting edge. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, no, actually, Wu-Tang, I have not heard Kim's new love song on our Insta yet. Um, sounds like I should. Sounds like I should do some homework. Um, so I have to bounce. Uh, unfortunately, it's 11.32, so I got I to gotta, I gotta get going. But um, that was amazing. We'd love to have you on again. Um, maybe it just depends on your, uh, thank you so much, Kiki. Um, so like school allowing and schedule allowing, um, you know, we'll definitely have you on again to do some singing and some chatting. And, um, you know, maybe there's some, there's some intel that we can get as far as like picking a school and trying to get things figured out for your Broadway and your singing career, but keep going. Keep mm -hmm. going. Do what you love for sure. Yes. Autumn, it was a pleasure meeting you finally. I know I've seen you um, coming into our streams every once in a while, so thank you for <laughs> hanging out with us and thank you for singing today. It was great. Thank you for having me. Of course. So I'm just going to do my little outro. Um, thank you guys for hanging out today. Keith, thank you so much for being here. Emma Yenvu, thank you so much for, for the likes earlier and for supporting Emma and for um, coming in and, and chatting with us a little bit. Um, Alexa, thank you for the likes as well. 7,000, thank you for being here. And um, Kim, as always, thank you for everything that you're up to. McKay, thank you. Tori, amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, complicated, thank you for coming in. Wu-Tang, amazing as always. Um, Donnie, you're crazy good. OG, thank you for being in here again today. Uh, hey, Margo, what's up? Um, Guzzler, appreciate you as well. And thank you, you guys, for being here today. I think this was a good, nerdy one. Um, next week, next week, Jay Cozy, Wednesday. Wednesday, Jay Cozy. Yes. And Friday is Rizieri, who is an artist that I know from um, Chile. Uh, he sings in Spanish. So the song that we're going to be reviewing and talking about and sort of his career and some things like that are going to be in, in Spanish, but he speaks English as well. So we're going to be talking about sort of the Latin American perspective on that. Um, appreciate you guys. We'll see you soon. Have a wonderful weekend. Stay safe, stay healthy, and keep singing. Autumn. <laughs> and also, I have, I actually have a singing Instagram page that you can follow. Oh. It's the same as my you now username. Okay. I don't post so you, as much, but. So fan up Autumn and check out her Instagram. See you guys. Have a wonderful weekend. We'll see you soon. Bye.